buy it now so I can start. All right. We said yesterday, all right, um, that we did some multiplying and dividing. Does anybody have any questions? All right. Anybody have any questions what we were doing yesterday? Um, now, today, all right, then we're going to go ahead and do 4 3. We're doing 4 3. And we are multiplying and dividing monomials. And the one thing I want you to remember is for monomials, a monomial just means a single term. All right, so you're multiplying things together. All right, now. Just take a quick look here. 4 squared is considered a monomial, and 4 cubed is uh, is considered a monomial. That's why they say we're multiplying monomials together. All right? So uh, 4 squared times 4 cubed. Now, again, I'm going to give you the answer. Uh, and explain exactly how I want you to think about it. All right. The mistake most kids make is they put a 16 by accident. All right. Because they think it's four times. Yeah, they think it's four times four. When in fact, the thing that's important here is the exponent. All right. When you multiply monomials together, and they have an exponent, you add exponents. So this answer for question number one would be four to the fifth power. That's all you have to do. Four to the fifth. It's not hard at all. The base stays the same. The base stays the same. Then you add the exponent. I'm not looking for the fact that four to the fifth is ten twenty-four. I don't care that. We're not doing that. We're not using the calculator. All right. All we're doing is we're learning the rules that apply to exponents. All right. And the other thing they want is they want you to leave it as a positive exponent. So if the answer had to have a negative exponent, you would know how to deal with that because you dealt with that yesterday. All right. Now, because you got that to be 4 to the 5th, now we're going to talk about number 2. All right. 9 to the 8th times 9 to the 6th. All right. What is that? Nine. Very good. Nine to the fourteenth. Nine to the fourteenth. All right, again, the base stays the same. The base stays the same. Then you add the exponents. All right? Hunter, tell me about number three. 7 to the 6th power. Very good. All right. Emily, tell me about 4. Exactly. 13 to the 6th power. Very good. Allison, tell me about number 5. Close. You forgot the negative, right? So be real careful. Negative 8 in parentheses to the 8th power. All right. Now, boys, listen. I'm trying to be nice. No. You're, you're interrupting. I'm, I don't even know who it was. All right. Concentrate till we get our work done. I promise to be nice to go home and not do math. All right. We can, we can get it done really easy today. All right. Let's concentrate. Let's get it done. All right, Kate, you're up. Number 6. Negative 21 to the 14th power is perfect. All right. Number 7. Let's go here, Alex. 2 to the 12th power. Perfect. Number 8, Landers. You're right. H to the what? Yes, correct. H to the negative 9. But since you weren't here yesterday, 
it doesn't you're you're correcting me before I'm done all right just listen for a second I promise I'm gonna get you there all right yes correct H to negative nine yesterday we said we couldn't have negative exponents all right so yesterday we learned if there's a negative as an exponent we just move it down to the nine all right so this one don't leave a negative exponent it's just one over h to the ninth. One over h to the ninth. All right. Now number nine. Let's go ahead, Jake. Um, number nine. Um, m to the twelfth. Amazing. M to the twelfth. Number ten. Let's go, Miles. Um, number ten is u to the twenty-first. Good. U to the twenty-first. Perfect. All right, let's see, Carly, tell me what's up with number 11. No, I want you to say the answer is. You're awesome, girl. See, that's how you do it. All right, following rules is easy for you. All right. Multiply, you're adding exponents. All right, William. Be careful. Yeah, that's correct. Remember, if there's no number, there's an understood one. All right. Ben, 13. Now you got the hard one, but listen, there is no exponent. With the four and the eight, what do you think you do with that four and the eight, Ben? Very good. So, what's the answer? What's six plus five? Bless you. Eleven. Thank you. Thirty-two D to the eleven. All right. Caroline, you're up. Fourteen. You. Just tell me the answer. Good job, girl. Yay! Very nice. Very nice. I told you guys it's super easy. Just rules. All right, Catherine. Um, nice, nice. Remember, you're trying to say the answer before we tell you the answer. That way, you can tell if you understand what we're doing. It doesn't do any good just to write the answer when someone says it. You want to know what you know what you're doing. All right, Caroline. Sixteen. Twelve to the what? Yay, girl, good job. All right, most people forget the one. All right, so be careful. All right, now I'm trying to create people who can think a little bit, even when I don't tell you what the answer is. So now we're going to try to take a good look at a new topic, and I'm going to see if uh, Mr. Mead can make some type of assessment here on what you think 6 to the 11th over 6 to the 3rd is. What do you think it is? Now, thinking logically, what do you think it is? And if you don't know, I'm trying to give you a hint. Look back at the problems we did over here. When we multiplied, what do I do to exponents? Okay, so now I'm asking you to divide. Wow, brilliant. Six to the eighth power. Everybody okay with that? Does everybody agree? Very simple. All right, Jack, number two, you're up. Okay. 18. Um, 18, so we do 15 to the first. You're awesome. 15 to the first power. Good. All right, 19. Uh-oh. Oh, what do um, you think, Cole? Uh, I got... Nine, six, nine, uh, six, 
Now, I hope, or I think you said this, and I'm very proud of you, too, Fog was that. That's a good yeah. job. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now, we're going to talk about it because I would want you to say, wow, I learned yesterday. Listen to me, guys. I learned yesterday, especially Lander, 9 to the negative 9, because that's negative, where can I put it? Where would it go? On the on the bottom. It would go on the bottom. So what I want to do now is I'm going to write it over here so you can see what I'm saying. This, pay attention now, watch, comes down here and it becomes a what? Positive 9. Everybody see that? Why are, I'm explaining question 19. Anybody have any questions with what I just did on that move? It had a negative exponent. From yesterday, we said, you have a negative exponent, it's in the top, you move it where? To the bottom. So I did that. So now I have 1 over 9 to the 7th times 9 to the 9th. And when you multiply, what do you do to exponents? So that's why it's 9 to the 16th. The other explanation is to say, I'm supposed to subtract the exponents, right? So if I subtract the exponents, it's going to be, now, what is negative 9 minus 7? Negative 16. Very good. So you could say that's 9 to the negative 16. Correct? And because it's a negative exponent, I can move it down. 1 over 9 to the 16. I don't care how you think about it. Those are all different good approaches to how to figure that problem out. Caroline. Well, we're dividing, right? What am I adding? Yeah, if I'm if you chose to move it to the denominator, yes. Is that what you did? No, no, I don't remember. Don't say things wrong. All right, all I'm all I'm asking you now is if you understand. Okay, now here's where I think, it, it, I promise you, I'm going to help you out a lot if you listen. Sometimes you tell me this is what I did, or this is what I thought. And what you're thinking was what? No, 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 you misunderstand my, it doesn't matter what you think because it wasn't correct. So sometimes I try to teach kids, listen, if your thought was good, but it didn't lead to the right answer, I don't like you repeating how you did incorrectly. I want you to think about what I told you just now. If you have a negative exponent, yesterday, what did we do to all the negative exponents? We moved them down. So this 9 to the negative 9 went down at 9 to the 7. Now when you're multiplying, you add the exponent. You hear me? All right? Or we could have said negative 9 minus 7, which is the same as negative 16 which is the same as 1 over 9 to the 16th. It doesn't matter how you do it. All right? The only mistake kids make is somehow they see this as a 2 somehow. We're not doing it as a 2. What's, what, what, what's the matter? He's trying to figure something out. He shouldn't have to physically get up and move you. All right? Come on. I'm not little kids in here. I'm not a babysitter. All right? Be nice to each other. Good. All right. Here we go. Um, so, am I on, Catherine? Now, um, who who did who did this one? One over nine to this. Oh, Cole. All right. Here we go. So, eight to the fourth or eighteen to the fourth over eighteen to the fourth. What do you think? Uh, so to the Yes, 18 to the 0. That's what I want everybody to put down. 
Now, yesterday we learned anything to the zero power is one. So we could technically write one, but that's not really the lesson that I want you to understand. I want you to understand you're simply subtracting exponents. On the test, I would want you to put down one. Right, but right now I'm trying to get you to understand you're subtracting exponents, which makes zero. All right. Now, um, Miles, tell me about number 21. Um, it is negative 7 to the first. Easy. Negative 7 to the first. Technically, do I have to write to the first? No. No, I don't. All right. Jake, tell me about number 22. Uh, number 22 is uh, 95 to the third power. 95 to the third power. Okay. 23. Go ahead. Uh, is V to the 10th. Very nice. So I agree, it's pretty easy. All right. What do you think about 24? Wow, good job. N to the 8th power. All right. Now, they just wrote these out in words now. All right, so 25. Um, Kate, how do I write 5 cubed? Yes, 5 to the 3rd power. Times, because that's what product means, 5 to the 4th power. So your final answer would be what? Are we um, multiplying or dividing? So what are we doing with the exponents? Let's go back to the first ones. what I want you to be able to tell me. So the answer is 5 to the... Now what I'm trying to show her up front is even if you make a mistake or you forget something, that's why we do a whole bunch of practice problems. So if you get nervous, you get confused, and you're not sure, look at your notes. That's why we do all of them together. Because I want them all right. Okay? Alright, Allison. Quotient. What do you think quotient means? Product. What do you think product means? So quotient means, there you go, girl. Quotient means divide. So dividing is a fraction. All right? So Okay, so, uh, I'm sorry, back on track. So, how do I write, well, 18 to the ninth power, and then 18 squared. How do I write 18 squared? Yes, ma'am, good job. 18 to the second power. So, what's the final answer? Now, look at your notes. Look at division. That's what I want you guys to be able to tell, all right? If you're not sure, go back to your notes, look things up, all right? Now, I don't care about question 28. Everybody good? Okay, so listen, now, um, today you got an option. We're going to finish up the worksheet number one, all right? It's on YouTube, so if you want, after you do it, you can check your work on YouTube, all right? And after that, you can get some other homework done if you need to. Or your other choice is tomorrow we're doing a bunch of IXL. You can get started on the IXL. All right, those are our options for today. None of the options are sitting around doing something on your iPad you're not supposed to be doing. Everybody hear me? Lots of work to do. All right, lots of work. All right? Yes, ma'am. No, you don't have to. Oh. I forgot about 27. Thank you so much. All right. So it was the product of z cubed. Well, so the product of z cubed and c cubed. Caroline, how do I write?
write it. You tell me how to write it. Z what? To what power? Right. Z to the third times, which is? All right. Thank you for that, Kate. All right. That's good. Z to the sixth was 27. All right. I don't know why I skipped that. All right. I just missed it. Now, again, you heard what I was saying now. All right. Flip back to the first worksheet. All right. And get that done. All right. Once you're done with that, you have options. Finish some other homework. You can start the Excel that's for tomorrow. All right. The other third option is definitely not sit around and do nothing and waste time. All right, find something to work on. All right, easy day, easy day.